um, hopefully you can see the screen I am sharing with you, which informs you that you are here at the expert panel Q&A webinar on affiliate marketing this time, a topic which we were just talking to the panelists about does not get the press it deserves very much doesn't get the press it deserves. So it's great to be able to be um, to be highlighting it today and all the last month as well. And we're going to be talking about kind of the, the, the current of what's going on in affiliate marketing and hopefully some questions from you guys as well. So if you've got questions, please do share, start sharing them now in the chat box, add them as we go through. I will be dropping in your questions as as we go along. So the more questions we get, the merrier really. And um, we are going to be joined imminently by three brilliant uh, affiliate experts. Well, you know this, hopefully, because you've, you've probably listened to them already on the podcast. If you haven't, you can still do that by heading to keepoptimizing.com. Not now, though. Watch the webinar first. Go and do that later. Um, uh, keepoptimizing.com or on Apple, Spotify, all of those places you can find us and you can listen to their episodes about their spe specific different areas of affiliates. But I'm going to be joined imminently by... Rick McGinnis of Bearcat Media, and he's got a great offer for all of you, which is free lifetime access to all 20 sessions from his Affiliate Management Expo. It's an amazing event he's run very, very recently, um, which is worth £127. And you can get it for free by using the code MASTERPLAN when you go to affiliatemanagementexpo.com forward slash VIP. And do write down any of these links right now, but I will also be sharing them when I send you guys the, uh, the replay email later. And if you're watching this on YouTube, they, those links should either be beneath you right now. If you're watching on the website, they certainly are. If you're on YouTube, you've probably got a link through to our website where you'll find these links as well, plus anything else we talk about today in the webinar. I'm also joined by um, Arlen Robinson from OSI Affiliate Software, who's offering a 20% lifetime discount on any OSI Affiliate Software plan. So if you want to avoid the big networks and run your own, uh, your own affiliate platform, then that is the place to go. And to get that discount, go to osiaffiliate.com forward slash master plan. And also joining us is Chris Tragett of Publisher Discovery, who are offering a free seven day trial and 20% off website pricing on any plan at publisherdiscovery.com. We will double check with Chris in a second if there should be a code on that. Um, I think there probably should be, and I think it should probably be master plan, but we'll double check with him when he's here in a moment or two. Um, I think this is the first time on one of these, we've had three amazing offers from our um, three amazing money-saving offers from our three uh, our three mem our three speakers today, which is just tantamount to how how awesome an industry the affiliate marketing industry is, and why I'm looking forward to this webinar so much because the affiliate teams they give they endlessly give to to the rest of us who are trying to do our affiliate marketing. Oh, and then down in the bottom corner on this screen, you've got me, who is the host of this show. So. Let's um, stop sharing this screen. Let's invite our our lovely uh, panelists to come and join me. So, guys, can you turn on your videos and um, audio again for me, please? And ah, uh, Chris is even sharing his offer in the uh, the chat. So, extra points to Chris for managing to do that. And let's just change the interface. Cheers, so, there we go. Big oh. pictures. Ah, oh, how are we doing, guys? Fantastic. <laughs> Very well, thank you. Top, but probably for everybody else's as well. Great Excellent. Day. Well, look, I've given people like a brief overview of who you are um, on the side deck, but I haven't really given them any any background or who your company is. So, um, Arlen, let's start with you, if we may. Could you just say, just let the audience know a little bit about your background in affiliates and, um, and your areas of expertise in OSI affiliates, please? Yes, sure. Not a problem. Can everybody hear me loudly and clearly? Sounding good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. As uh, Chloe uh, kindly uh, introduced me and, our, and the offer that we have, of course, I'm, uh, I am Arlen Robinson. I am the co-founder of OSI Affiliate Software, and we provide a, an affiliate software solution that will allow really any business, uh, primarily e-commerce businesses and other businesses as well, though, to set up their own affiliate or referral programs using our platform. So as Chloe had mentioned, if you're not looking to go with any of the networks, the commission junctions, the, um, you know, some of the other platforms, then you want to create your own in-house affiliate program, you would be able to do that with our solution. And as far as my background is concerned, um, uh, I, I, 
I actually was telling somebody the other day, I've been in this <laughs> industry quite a long time. I feel like a dinosaur, actually. <laughs> I've been going strong for about 21 years now um, wow. with the business. We started off as a full service web development agency and we transitioned to create our own suite of solutions. The affiliate software was one of them. And uh, that was the one that really stood the test of time. We've since been discontinued our other solutions and, and have been going full speed ahead with the affiliate software, which has really at this point been existent, in existence for approximately 15 years now. And wow. with our solution, um, we meet the needs of a variety of companies from small to large. And so even if you're just fresh out of the gate, startup business, our solution would be great for you. Or if you're a, a business that has, uh, uh, an enterprise business you can meet the needs of. So we meet the needs of startups as well as enterprise businesses. One of our enterprise companies right now that's using it is a company called uh, in incorporate.com. They provide business incorporation services. Uh, they have done that for over a million businesses. So wow. from seeing that, you can see kind of the ability for our solution to scale from small to large. And so um, definitely excited to talk to you guys, answer any questions that you have about uh you know, how you would manage and do affiliate marketing on your own and uh, with an in-house solution such as ours. Awesome. Thank you, Arlen. And um, we'll go to we'll go to Chris next. I would just say for those of you who've just joined us, if you have any questions, ask them now and throughout and do not wait till the end to ask them, because if you wait till the end, there won't be time for me to ask your questions. <laughs> so get the questions coming in as you want to. Um, uh, please, 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 please. Although I will happily fill the time um, if you don't ask any, but I'd really love you to. Um, Chris, we're going to come to you next. So could you just okay. let people know a little bit about you and Publisher Discovery, please? Sure. Uh, in terms of dinosaurs, I think I can edge you on that one. Um, <laughs> being considerably older than almost anybody else in the industry, um, <laughs> I kicked off in affiliates um, about 2003, um, having spent a few years pre prior to that in design agencies doing these kind of one-page websites for four thousand dollars, that kind of thing, as it was in those days. Um, <laughs> a bit mad, um, but uh, yeah, I kicked off in 2003 with the Buy App Network, which became part of AOL, became part of uh, AWIN eventually. And uh, did some client side stuff, discovered how tough it was finding affiliates. And um, when I ended up with an S SEO platform, I thought, hang on, we can use this to find affiliates, which is what we did. It took a bit of re-engineering an SEO platform to do it because it has to go so much deeper. But um, over the past few years, various versions of this on our own and then as part of another group as well, um, we have iterated that so that so we can see Currently about three and a half million affiliate websites linking to about 570,000 advertisers anywhere in the world um, through about 2.7 billion links. So it's a bit of a data lake as our head of AI likes to call it. Users are people like, um, so there's quite small advertisers using it. There's agencies of any size from two or three people to multinationals and networks. And we have integration with networks like Link Connector, Tune, Everflow, um, Cake, um, Affiliate Future in the UK and a few others. Very nice. Thank you, Chris. I can say we have had an epic question come in, uh, which I'm going to shorten when we get as far as questions. But that that literally that could be a podcast, not, not an episode, a whole podcast on its own. Um, but it's, it is a good question. So thank you. I think it was Michael. Okay. I've, got to, I've got to scroll up to see who put it in. It was Michael wow. who put it in. So thank you for the question, Michael. And we will tackle that one first. Um, yeah. But yeah, epic. Impressive. The, pa the, the pressure's no on pressure. for everyone else. <laughs> who, who, who could maybe write the shortest question? I don't know. Um, anyway, Rick, your, your turn to introduce yourself to the audience, please. Perfect. Yeah, I'm Rick McGinnis. Uh, I'm the owner of um, Bearcat Media. We're an affiliate program management agency. Um, I haven't been in the industry as long as these two guys, so um, I don't want to date them, but I, I've, I've been in there uh, <laughs> since since like 2010, 2011, so uh, just about a decade now. Um, I started out on the agency side, um, working for a few agencies, managing affiliate programs there, uh, then decided that um, I wasn't exactly happy working for someone, so I wanted to do it myself. Uh, I had the connections and everything like that to go out on my own. And um, here I am today running my own um, um, affiliate marketing agency. And that's all I do is we do just do affiliate management. We don't do anything else. Um, so we specialize and, and we really focus on growing programs. 
And uh, yeah, so uh, any, my, my clients range from small um, one person shops up to large multinational companies. And um, yeah, and, and as Chloe mentioned, uh, I ran a, an event a few months ago, um, the Affiliate Management Expo. Uh, it was purely educational for, for brands to understand affiliate mm-hmm. marketing, get the, get the hang of it, understand how to integrate it and in, in ways to you know, implement strategies. And um, I will be doing another event later in the year as well involving that too. So that's, that's Rick in a nutshell. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Rick. And the reason I'm smiling is, is because James has come back with the shortest question, why affiliate marketing? Um, <laughs> which, James, across the whole month, we've been answering that question. So that's an even longer answer, I think, than the, uh, than the, uh, than the very long question. OK, we're going to start off with Michael's epic, epic question. And I think we're going to get some really interesting answers to this, because I think one of the things I love about the panel we've got together for you this month is that we've got the the software platform expert with Arlen. We've got the research expert, which is such a big part of of, um, of affiliates with Chris. And then we've got the pulling it all together to actually make money person, which I know the, your other two are interested in making money for people as well. Yeah. But if Rick's there, you know, at the hard end dealing with the client going, why are the sales not higher? Or, or how do we get more sales? Mm. Um, so we've got a really good, good mix of input. So the, the most epic question in the world. Uh, from uh, Michael is he is building a, a kind of a, a single product store doing business card design where he's built one page site, got his designer on track. And the on the course he's been on, the one marketing method they've recommended is that you go after affiliates and you sign up bloggers to be affiliates. and You pay them commission to do your marketing for you. Nice marketing method. I could write a book on all the reasons why you shouldn't go for just one marketing method in a business plan, but we're not going to get into that today. We're going to answer your affiliate question, which is, what are the steps or process you would take to develop an affiliate marketing strategy for this sort of kind of really focused product? So let's not dwell too much on the fact it's service. Let's think about the fact it's a really, really mm-hmm. focused product where you're possibly going to have to be um, finding the perfect affiliates. And I think we'll go with what's the first thing you do from each of you, because this could take us the entire episode. And I want to cover some both startup and, or starting with affiliates and longer term bits. So who would like to jump in with their first thing they do if they had that really focused product to build an affiliate campaign around? Uh, Chloe, if you don't mind, um, the the offering, if you can repeat exactly what he's offering. Yeah, sure. Um, he's doing, if you, uh, you can read i'll let you know how to read it yourself and then i will repeat it um because you might find it easier to read it on the left hand side of your screen you should have like a chat button and a little chat circle and a participant circle and if you go to the chat one you'll be able to see this impressively long question but the 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 business is a a a business card design service he's got his designer ready to do the designs he's got his one page website or simple website with buy your business card design. And then um, he's looking to, as his primary marketing strategy, recruit bloggers probably to be the affiliates to sell his service. So my kind of slightly revamped version of the question is what's the one thing, what's the first thing you would do to take him on the journey of building, building his affiliate marketing success? Okay, great. Well, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in there with the first uh, response to that since Sounds I asked the clarification. And uh, yeah, it's a great question, uh, Michael. I, I would say from looking at it, really the first thing that you want to do is determine, because you mentioned as far as for the business card services that you're providing, you're looking to reach out to bloggers. The first thing that you really want to define is, okay, what type of bloggers are you really looking to reach out to? Um and I think before you even think about what type of bloggers you're looking to reach out to, you want to think about on your end, really, what is your, your really your mission with the business and what are you trying, what problems are you trying to solve and who are you trying to connect with? Because, you know, there's probably a million and or a billion bloggers out here online. And so in different niches, uh, as far as, business education, helping people start businesses and all of those types of people, of course, that are dealing with people that want to learn about businesses and want to learn how 
to do various aspects of a business, you know, a business card is something that would come under that that somebody would need if they're starting a business. And so it's really broad. So I think you really want to focus in and decide, all right, what particular type of blogger am I going to reach out to? Um, you know, as far as dealing with your particular niche and somebody that is creating these business card services, you know, maybe you want to think about a, a blogger that because that is something that is really happening at the start of a business. You know, when you're starting your business, you're thinking about all of the prolifer, uh, you know, yeah. uh, peripheral materials that you're going to need, the website, the business cards, the logo. So you probably want to think about focusing on bloggers that are dealing with startup businesses and that are giving a lot of initial advice as to starting a business because they're definitely people in that niche. And so I would say you want to think about that. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only niche you need to focus on. But I would say what the main thing you want to do is really try to try to focus and try to find that right uh, partner, right affiliate that is, is really going to have the audience that you're looking for. So you're going to really have to kind of think about it, do some soul searching, figure out really mm. what type that you're looking for. So I would say that's really no, the first thing you want to do. I, I'd, I, I'd agree. You've got to get Bloggers is a bit too wide. Business cards is a bit is a bit too wide for the blogger piece. You've got to go a bit more niche. Um, Chris, you're obviously in the world of finding affiliates. So, what would your mm -hmm. first piece of advice be? And it doesn't have to be about finding affiliates. Of course, well, it wouldn't. You actually. would do something my, different. <laughs> I think my first one goes back to kind of when network side first. If it's a fairly new business, make sure you know exactly what your numbers are in terms of conversion from click to hit the site, hit the site to conversions. So affiliate to pr promote you're going to need to know what the standard conversions are if it's converting at 0.3 percent they think hmm, i may go somewhere else if it's converting at 20 percent then bam yeah they're up for it so they will put a put bit of time and effort doing that so that's probably my first thing is make sure you really stamp on your numbers and you know exactly um how how your average consumer responds and it may be different from different sectors so it might be that uh, if you've got connections with somebody in say the maybe not this past year but something like the, the trade show business that may get you far better conversions than somebody who's a standard just like a business blogger or something like um quickbooks type of affiliate so have a, have a look at that and, and think about how the conversions vary by different types of referrer once you start getting them through i like it we're getting into the numbers i'm always happy when we're getting into the numbers um <laughs> Rick, how about you? Where would you start? Or I guess, where do you start with a, with a new client? Well, I was going to get into this. So, Michael, the first thing I would do, um, since it, I do this with every client of mine, is we just do a competitive analysis. We try and find out who your direct competitors are, who your indirect competitors are, find out where their affiliate network, affiliate program is being run on, um, find out... Um, the, the commission they're paying, the the cookie duration, all the information that you, you're going to need to present to your affiliates to get them to promote your offer, you're going to need to know uh, that because mm. the affiliates are, that you're yeah. going after are going to be comparing your program to the others, as Chris said. Mm. And you need to uh, understand the, the competition, what they're doing. You may even want to... Um, subscribe to their email newsletters and even join their affiliate programs as an affiliate so that you can get their uh, their newsletters that they send out to affiliates so that you can see what they're doing, what kind of promotions they're running, uh, what kind of contests are running with their affiliates. It, you you got to understand that the affiliates have options and you want to make sure that your yours is uh, above average and um, once you have all that information, then you can go find the affiliates. And I'm sure we'll get into it with uh, with Chris's tool, but there's mm -hmm. there's various ways you can find competitors, affiliates. And then what you want to do is re eventually reach out to them and try and sway them away from whoever they're promoting to, to promote your brand. Yeah. But but yeah, definitely start with a competitive analysis and understand who, who they are. Um, because there's a, in your niche, there's probably quite a bit. But you want to find the ones that that uh, are the most competitive for what you do, and then just uh, mm -hmm. try and be as competitive with your payouts and and, um, and and offers as you can. 
And a, kind of a follow up question to, to all of you on this is how many affiliates would you be looking to recruit to to properly sense check whether affiliate marketing was a good option for a for a business or not? Because it, it's a hundred to me feels a bit met, bit too many. Five feels too few. But uh, what sort of numbers and over what time span would you be anticipating doing that before going? Actually, this is this is amazing, or this is horrendous. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I guess I'll start off with that. Um, the answer to that, the numbers, you know, with anything, and what I always tell affiliates. Uh, excuse me, our customers that have affiliate programs. And what we always see is that normally, just like with anything, with the pool of affiliates that you have, no matter what the number is, you're going to have like 80% of them sending you, um, you're gonna see, I'm sorry, you're going to have 20% of them sending you 80% of all of the sales. So yeah. it's always going to be the few that are going to send the most. And it's just like that with anything. The 80-20 rule kind of goes through, through everything. Um, as far as the rule of thumb, or if there is even a rule of thumb for the amount of affiliates, like you said, Chloe, I think 100 is, you know, maybe a, a bit too much, but you want to get enough to to kind of cover it, cover yourself, because mm. especially these days, everyone has a lot going on. Mm. It's, um, you know, everything that's going on in the world has forced people to to kind of navigate a little bit differently and it's, it's kind of put people in different situations. And so um, everybody has different situations. So I would say probably want to shoot for anywhere between maybe, I would say at least 20, um, probably 20 mm -hmm. to 50. I think that gives you a good amount where with that segment, you're going to get enough activity from a good amount of those people I, that will, you know, uh, try to do something. I like the fact you built, or in the 80-20 there, there um, Arlen, because mm. there is, there's always that, you, the time you spend recruiting affiliates, you can't spend turning your affiliates into high-performing affiliates. Right. So you, you have to balance your workload between those two because mm. it's not just a case of sign them up and they're going to drive you 100 grand a year. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. If exactly. only, but it doesn't exactly. happen that way. Um, exactly. Rick, how about you? Do, you? do you have a number you aim for? Or is it more about just trying to find the quality? Well, yeah, it's exactly it. I don't actually put a number on anything. Um, I go for quality over quantity. Uh, that's just the, the way I operate because you could have like 100 affiliates and three of them be really solid and the rest of them are not good. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a horrible ratio. So if you, but if you have 20 and three of those are good, that's, that's, that's better and it's easier to manage too. But getting back to the original question of like what type of affiliates, like you want to focus on bloggers and things like that. You can do that, but I wouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. You got to mm -hmm. diversify that. You can't just rely on bloggers because uh, stuff happens. Yeah. They, they get better offers. They, yeah. their site go closes, whatever. You got to make sure you have uh, a diversified pool of affiliates from content to maybe email affiliates uh, and, and maybe some of the, the discount uh, promo code affiliates, yeah. too. Um, there, there's there, there's definitely uh, benefits to having bloggers, but the benefits of having a diverse base of affiliates outweighs everything. And uh, and it's just uh, it, it, that's something that brands struggle with. They they have a, a lot of one type versus the other. And the, the really mm -hmm. good affiliate programs have uh, a mix of, of as many as they possibly yeah. can. I'd agree totally there, Rick. Yeah. So, yeah, it's diversification. And uh, very often you see affiliate programs which are kind of heavy swayed one way or the other. And we see all the people linking to all the various people. So and in terms of numbers, we see kind of the big brands, you know, the, the things like Hermes, um, Mulberry handbags or purses for your side of the pond or whatever it might be. Um, and those kinds of things, you might find only 20 publishers actually connected to that program. Uh, and it, they probably only have 30 or 40 allowed on there. Whereas someone like Macy's have got nearly 2,000 affiliates that are live. They'll probably have 10,000 who have signed up to the program and not doing anything. But we just see the live links. So, so that's the case there. Something like eToro might have 24,000. Booking.com's in-house programs, there's 125,000 live affiliates with links on pages. So 
it depends on who you are. <laughs> and what the sky's doing. the limit. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. And if you can manage 125,000 affiliates, you're a better man than me, Gunga did. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The numbers should be manageable, but don't forget, it's not numbers. You're not, not sticking shit against the wall. Um, each one of those needs to be a relationship, and you need to manage that relationship. And this is a relationship business, not a numbers business entirely. I think kind of re- probably agree with that totally. That, that brings us brings us on nicely to the next question that's come in from, uh, from Reza. No, you, you've done you've done a very slick job of, for me here, um, because uh, Reza has asked about uh, what sort of conversion rate to expect from affiliates. But the bigger question comes in what he said after he asked the question, which is that he's recruited an influencer with eight thousand followers who ran an Instagram live for him with no conversions. Um, and he's not sure whether to continue the partnership or not. And my immediate thought is, well, it's time to have a conversation about the, qu- mm. you know, the, the fit yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, so how, so let, let's turn this one into a question around kind of, or actually, first off, let's quickly answer his also, question about conversion rates and then we'll and get also, into the relationship. I'd say beyond that, um, it's kind of, if it's just an Instagram person that's dealing with stuff, how is he tracking what's going on? You, mm. Everything needs to be tracked. Exactly. Is there attribution? So you've got kind of stages of the funnel. And I know everyone's been banging on in, in affiliate since 2000 and whenever, uh, that attribution is the big next big thing. Uh, it's actually mm. doable nowadays. So you can actually kind of ensure that stuff coming from an influencer goes in and think, ah, oh, yeah, that was part of that process because punter A, has come in there and then gone through to a, a review site and then visited the um, the coupon site and gone to a cashback site. And you can then actually attribute mm. proportions of, a re- of that to each one. So the influencer might not be the one that converted. They might be the one that's tipping all the stuff in the top of your hopper. So don't cut your nose off despite your face, I would say. <laughs> yeah, well, I think a lot of people will track <laughs> a, a, an Instagram Live on what happens during, you know, the sales yeah. that actually happen in that time frame. But of course, with Instagram Live, you can do what we've just done with the links I gave yeah. you earlier and we put in the thing, which is most of them you'll see a slash master plan or there's a code master plan. Yeah. And so these three can track how useful it was being on here, mm. you know, which is exactly the same as you're doing with an influencer on a, on a marketing campaign. So you can create create a url specific for for that influencer in order to, to track through the live and then once you've tracked them onto your website you can see how that that traffic performs over time rather than in that short window um any any other any yeah. thoughts on how we yeah. brick so the, the question i have for this uh for this influencer that they're working with did they do the proper research up front and, and vet this influencer properly did they find out the engagement rate for this influencer? Mm. Um, were, were their followers legit or were they, were they bots or bought? So th- those are the kind of questions I like to ask when I'm doing these type of engagements um, because someone could have uh, 8,000 followers, I believe they said it was. Yeah. But the engagement rate, you could, you got, it could be very poor. You have to go back to their posts to see um, – how many likes or how many comments and shares they're getting, things like that. And that'll give you a, a pretty good idea of, of how, how engaged your audience is and, and how it may work in your favor when doing the Instagram live. But if you don't do that, you don't know, you're, you're just throwing stuff up there, hoping it works. Yeah. 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 yeah um, Rick, that was, you're right on point with that. And that's really where I was going to uh, mm-hmm. dig in as well. Um, cause there was a lot of, there's a lot to unpack here with this particular question, but I think you definitely got to start off on, you know, pulling out the background of this particular influencer. Like you said, these days, you know, believe it or not, you know, um, I mean, you can buy hundreds of thousands of followers. There's companies that sell followers. And so it's not mm-hmm. that hard to get followers, you know, even 8,000 is not a huge amount. So it's not something that could be a, you know, an immediate red flag, but, you do got to, you know, really do your due diligence and, and figure out, all right, if you're going to thinking of uh, raise it, if you're thinking of continuing with this particular um, influencer, um, like Rick said, what is their engagement rate? You want to look at their past posts. Are they getting in there? Are they responding to comments? Are they or is it just kind of one sided? And mm-hmm. and then you and to another level, you know, you got to start to look at who's who are the people that are commenting 
you know, there's a lot of trickery going on these days as far as yeah. Instagram is concerned. They're bots that can actually automatically respond to um, to posts. And so you, you got to do a fair amount of due diligence really before, you know, deciding to take the next step. Um, the second piece is uh, something that is definitely I'm familiar with in my wheelhouse as far as what, um, you know, um, Rick, uh, not Mick, I'm sorry. Um, Chris had mentioned uh, that the tracking is a key component to this as well. You mentioned, Chloe, also the having an attribute link, having a specific link for that influencer um, and a live. You can definitely do that. But one thing to keep in mind is, you know, within, the, of course, Instagram um, with the links, they can't be clickable links to an outside uh, site or anything like that. So, I mean, you could put a link, but, you know, you're, you're leaving it up to people to remember that link. Mm -hmm. Uh, and type it in. So we're not sure what exactly you did. Um, one thing also to note with influencers as well is there is something that Instagram implemented a couple of years ago, and that's with their uh, Instagram stories and having the swipe up pages that um, many people may be familiar with. You have to have a, a business account. You have to have at least 10,000 followers to activate it. And so an influencer that has that amount and has a business account will be able to have their Instagram story uh, displayed and then have the swipe up option. You've probably seen that the swipe up with the arrow. And when that happens, you can have an external website automatically loaded. And then you could have what Chris mentioned, a specific link for that influencer that you could track it with your your tracking mechanism. So that's one way. I'm not sure if you did that. Another way that we tell people all the time using our software is that you could use and we're, that we're compatible with is a promo code tracking. You can just tell them to mention a promo code in the live or in their post, you know, mention your brand name and but tell them if they tell them to tell the customers or their followers that if they use that particular um, promo code, they can get a discount. And so that's also a great way to, to set up the tracking. So those are definitely things that you also want to look at and figure out uh, what how they were promoting. What were they saying, mm -hmm. you know, to really dig in there to yeah. figure out what happened in your case. I'm going to add yeah. Two. Oh, I'm so going to add two things, yeah. and then then, we'll, then you can speak, Chris. I, I want to <laughs> talk a little bit here. Um, I want to yeah. add two two things in for you, uh, for you, Reza. One is. Um, you shouldn't just be testing with one influencer, you should be testing with multiple, a little bit like we said earlier, but you know, you should be spreading that budget around and seeing what's happening because it might be that the the type of influence you're going for or some or the, the product you're asking them to promote isn't quite the right one. The other thing um thing I would say is what was the format of that live? What was the product you were doing? What was the offer you were giving? At what time of day were they doing it? What sort mm. of, you know, feel was going on? What had they done the days either side of it? You know, if this is an influencer who's done a big product showcase the last three days for other retailers, then yeah, they're, they're, they're going to get less of an impact than if for the last three days they've been pure content. And, mm. you know, and did you give them one product to promote or with a great discount on it? Or was it more of a general brand piece? You know, there's a lot to unpick. So I think if, if in your gut, this is an affiliate who you're like, this should have worked. I don't understand why it wouldn't work. Mm. Open the communication, have a chat with them and go, this is crazy. I thought we were going to both make shit loads of money out of this. What do you mm. think went wrong? How can we do it again? So it, often... Often the first time you do it, it might not work with something like this. And you have to iterate either with the same person or with somebody else. But I wouldn't, I don't think it's a straightforward, we're working with you forever or we're never working with you again. I think there's a conversation to be had. But Chris, what were you, what were you going to come in with? I was going to say um, that it's worthwhile as part of your, your research and kind of part of your due diligence to make sure that, uh, yeah, check the channel, check who they've worked with before, and then um, go on to LinkedIn and check the brands that they've worked with. You may well have a second connection whereby you can either get a, a connection or you can just ask a question. So hit connect and ask, ask, just add a note. Say, look, I'm thinking of working with this guy. What do you reckon? And if you get three or four of those, three of the four come back, yeah, great, no problem at all, or vice versa. You know exactly where you stand before you've even kind of uh, shelled out any dollars. Yeah, no harm in getting a reference. <laughs> very, very true. Yeah. Right. What do we we got stuff going on in the chat chat room? This is good. Um, so Michael, who was the question about the business card piece, he was very happy. He's made some notes. 
Um, he's got plenty of homework. Uh, Michael, the replay of this will be available within about an hour of us coming offline. So you can watch it again and uh, go, into, you can go to the keepoptimizing.com site, go to the affiliate page and it will be on there as soon as it's on YouTube. Um, so you go take some more notes. Um, then we've got James who's asking, as an affiliate, do you use an equation calculator, conversion rate versus commission percentage versus traffic cost over time? So you can estimate profits over time based on the percentage of revenue being invested. So, oh, Reza said thank you for the answer to the last question as well. So, so I guess um, it, I always think it's useful as a, as a retailer as a merchant to understand how affiliates are evaluating you. And I guess that's what James is asking here is how are affiliates deciding where to go? Because they've got this hose of traffic and they could send it to you or your competitor. And yes, how much they like you, because we're all humans is going to come into play. But how else are they are they evaluating uh, people? Anyone want to jump in on, on that massive question? Ooh, big questions today. Rick, you were you look like you're about to jump in. Yeah. yeah, so when I'm uh, reaching out to affiliates to join affiliate programs, uh, I try and give them as much information as possible in, so that they can do their uh, calculation to see if it's a good fit for them because it, many times it may not be the actual commission percentage that is is going to sway them. It may be your conversion rate on your website. So that's important to make sure your conversion rate is um, is solid because if it's low, then the affiliates aren't going to make any money. And uh, a lot of times, what affiliates look at is uh, earnings per click uh, number, and if and if that's not what they're looking for, that could be a deterrent as well. So uh, many affiliates use the calculations to determine if these uh, are going to be good fits for them program wise, but I. A lot of it's just like, like their own uh, goals, like what they want to get out of it. Some of them, like I said, are motivated by money. Some, some may be different. So and, and there's just different ways that they can be um, be, be tackled here with, with, with in terms of, uh, of of affiliate like calculations. Everyone has their own ways of doing things, but but definitely try and provide affiliates with as much information as you can so that they can do whatever math they got to do to, to make them make it work for them. Cool. Anything, anyone got anything else to add on that? Cause I thought it was quite a comprehensive answer, but I think it is. Yeah. It's more than I can offer. I just <laughs> <know that. laughs> so, did all to that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, um, so uh, we've got other questions coming in, but whilst those are coming in, I'm going to ask one of mine. So um, we are approximately uh, five, six months, seven months from Christmas at the moment, which if someone wants to, someone who's a gifting business, who's a, everything's going to go crazy from kind of October onwards, mm -hmm. who is looking to really revamp or up their affiliate activity for that that key christmas period yeah what are the steps they should be taking now because we've talked a bit a bit about it and we talked a lot on the podcast about it being about relationships so there's mm. the recruitment phase i come and sign up to me there's the agreeing how you're going to work together testing yeah. each other out trusting each other as you start building that relationship and then there's the really performing so I'm thinking about now is at the time we should really be getting active if we want to make a, um, a, a you know, a solid pro solid performance from our affiliate channel when we get to Q4. So how oh. is, is now the right time? And yeah. what, what are the good steps to be doing? You're all either nodding or saying yes. So Chris, Chris, you're clearly, clearly eager to come in on this one. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why there's, you see in marketing magazines, all this kind of stuff, Christmas in July that's when you should be planning for Christmas, July. Uh, and you should be actually have recruited your affiliates by July, August time, because they'll be building their sites August, September. By October, you've missed it. Um, so you need to be out here now. If you think in terms of your US market, by October, you well and truly missed it because you have Thanksgiving running at the end there. So mm -hmm. you need to be doing stuff May, June, July. So now is a cracking good time to be finding all of the Black Friday websites that um, have gone into dormancy. They might be in parking, but they will be coming back out and uh, dusted off and made pretty in good time for Christmas. So you need to make sure you're finding those guys adding to your program. Def definitely. That's great advice, Chris. Um, now is definitely time, especially here in the US. I definitely second that just because 
you know, we have the Black Friday and these days, the promotions here in the U.S., they just keep getting earlier and earlier and earlier. So, yeah, it, it was it, a week it, this year, wasn't it? Yeah. Black Friday it week. Like, it you had singles week. day was a week. In China, exactly. Yeah. And so like, they keep stretching it. So because of yeah. that, yeah, you definitely got to be on it um, very early. And that's that is for sure. I think another thing you also want to focus on, because not only do you want to get out there and then there's always a flood of all of these retailers all trying to vie for the same, you know, consumer base. And they're also, of yeah. course, using affiliates to try yeah. to leverage an increase in sales during the holiday period. And at the same time, you have the affiliates that are looking and kind of picking and choosing which offers they want to really focus on. Because, you know, the bottom line is we all only have just a limited amount of time. And, you know, the affiliates know this as well. So they're picking and choosing the right offer, the ones that kind of really, you know, give them the best bang for their buck. And so, you want to definitely focus on coming up with the right incentive, the right offer for your uh, you know, affiliate. And so when I'm thinking when you're thinking of the affiliate offer, the incentive, you know, normally, traditionally with affiliates, with e-commerce stores, what we typically tell people is, of course, you want to do something that's typically a percentage of an order total, uh, something that is going to be uh, definitely a little bit more then you would pay if you have, let's say, a regular referral program, um, you know, something more that you're going to give your customer because these affiliates, of course, have a built in audience, a built in following. And naturally, you're going to get a lot more from them than just your customer that's just going to do a post on their Facebook page that has, you know, 100 friends. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a big difference there. And so you definitely want to have a, a lot more sizable commission. So, you know, if you're thinking of what the commission amount is, you want something that is beyond the normal. So when, when I'm when you're thinking of an exact amount, see if you can do the 30 percent, 40 percent and even higher. Well, you know, a lot of it I know, and, you know, that may sound alarming, but a lot of it I know is going to come down to, of course, what you have room with in your profit, your profit margin. At the end of the day, you've got to make money. You want them to make money, but, you know, you can't give all of your profit away. So you want to see really how high you can go because it's 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 prime time you know the uh holiday period is like uh the super bowl for affiliates <laughs> you know mm -hmm. if i'm going to use an analogy the super bowl here in the u.s is a, is a huge thing and so you know that's that's prime time for them and so they're looking for the offers that can give them the best bang so you definitely want to spend time on, on coming up with the you know the right one for you I mean, uh, uh, Rick, I'll come to your point in a minute, but I just want to quick, quickly ask an extra question, which is, are you seeing affiliates start, oh, sorry, merchants starting to reveal what their Black Friday deals are going to look like and when their Black Friday is happening to affiliates this early to enable the affiliates to, to plan it? Or are we a couple of months away from that? Anyone? Mm. Because well, obviously you have to let them in, don't you? Because <laughs> because you want them, to, you don't want them to go. Oh, it's the wrong, the right Friday in November. I, sorry, I can't see a calendar. Can't come up with a date. Uh, Black Fridays go, and you email your customers at the same time as you email your affiliates. It's got to be ahead of time. I guess Rick, when do you? Because you're managing this for people. When do you um, let people know what the let the affiliates know what the Black Fridays and, and other promotions look like? How much notice do you give them? Well, I'm, I'm not sure brands know this early, but. Uh, definitely around midsummer is when they typically mm -hmm. start hashing out their their Q4 plans, and my my suggestion and even what what I see is if you have the promo calendar created, there's no reason not to share it. If, if yeah. things change, you can obviously let them know. But but if you have an idea, uh, there's no reason not to. That's going to give you the competitive advantage um, over over other brands, knowing that the affiliates already have your your offers uh, so that that's um that, that's just my take on it uh, I, I don't see too many mm -hmm. brands doing it this early but uh but yeah I, with anything so even if they have uh like right now it's 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 may and then in the u.s there's the fourth of july is a big holiday if you have promos ready for that get it out to them now get the creatives out to them so that they can start mm. planning and things like that. So the, the sooner, the better don't hold on to this to the last minute, because you're going to be competing with the other merchants at that time too, for, yeah. for eyeballs and then and the, the inbox is going to get flooded. So just got to think a little bit, uh, yeah. a little bit outside the box and ahead of the game here. 
I'll give you a stat on that one, though, Rick. I was talking to James Little from Top Cashback, and uh, he said at certain key times of year, their kind of um, requests from advertisers can reach up to 6,000 emails a month. So mm -hmm. if you've sent one and you're hoping somebody gets back to you next week, um, I think you need to be up in how you communicate. <laughs> and one thing I bang, bang on about a lot is making sure you communicate in all the channels because, yeah, they've got an inbox, might be looked at by an intern once a week. Um, they've also got uh, social media. They've got LinkedIn. They've got uh, – so stalk people on LinkedIn. By that, I mean open up their profile and look at them. They'll get a notification they're being looked at. It's always a handy way of doing stuff. Yeah. Um, costs you nothing, which is great. But also follow them or set up an aff affiliate, particular affiliate Twitter handle and follow them from your Twitter handle. So brand underscore affs or affiliates or something like that. And then if they if you hit follow, um, what will happen is they'll get a notification in the email that they check personally kind of about 20 times a day. So you're, you're kind of upping how you're communicating you're working those channels. And it's a people business, so you're communicating with people. Don't forget that they're people, and they have pressures from all sides. So the more you're stalking them, the more, in the nicest possible way, <laughs> <laughs> the, the more you're engaging, the better it's going to be, and more likely your email will actually get read. And it also comes down to having that relationship, doesn't it? Because if yeah. someone's getting 6,000 emails and you're someone they talk to every couple of months and they've done good yeah. work within the past, they're going yeah. to pick your email out of those yeah. those crazy numbers that they're getting. Um, hey, Chloe, real quick. Um, hmm. I wanted to circle back into the original question. Yes, about, you please do. Yeah, good so point. what I look for, like Chris talked about recruiting. Um, Arlen talked about like offers. I think you should make sure that your site is actually tidied yes. up, like yeah. c conversion rate wise, um, mm. everything like that, because load speed. Yeah, everything. Yeah. You you want to make sure that your site is is optimized. This this should be going mm. on all year. It shouldn't just be happening at, at holiday times. But you should make sure your site's fully optimized mm. um, because conversion rate is big. If your yeah. site doesn't convert your affiliates are not going to promote your, your, your brand. It's just as simple as that. Why would they? Um, yeah. So you want to make sure that uh, it, you, you do it as often as possible uh, to make sure that um, it's optimized for, for conversion, just, just for um, not just affiliates, but just for everything in general, because mm. a, a little bit of increase in your conversion rate can, can mean big bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah on top of that i would say make sure that you've got your hosting lined up so that it does expand for map so if you've got an affiliate that goes absolutely hits the sweet spot and goes for bam and you get conversions which are through the roof your site's got to be able to operate at that speed as well so um if you're used to getting 100 sales a day you need to be have that buffer zone without going mm -hmm absolutely mad on your uh, amazon web services costs but you know you've got to have that buffer mm -hmm. And right. some of the more dedicated hosting will have that buffer built in for it, and, and even on a shared hosting scheme. And mm -hmm. That's a bit of my background. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. An interesting stat, which I think is going to be quite useful. During the lockdown here in the UK, um, I heard stories from a friend of mine that uh, Wix and B&Q, which are a bit like Best Buy in the States there. So it's kind of a, it's the doing your, doing your work in, on the house and stuff like that. When everyone locked down in the UK, both those sites crashed. And not just the sites, their whole business model crashed because nobody was in factories building stuff, making stuff to sell. So for Wix, at times you had a 45 minutes wait to be let onto the website just so they could choke the actual consumer flow. So, yeah, stuff happens. That's the most extreme I've ever <laughs> that's, seen. That's but pretty... <laughs> oh, I, I can top you on the most extreme, which I'll do very, very quickly. I shouldn't have mentioned okay. it. Uh, the most extreme <laughs> I've ever seen is in Australia, where their, um, oh, I can't remember the name of their massive department store chain in, in, uh, David in Australia. Jones. No, no, David the other Jones, one. Woolworths, Coles. Cole, no, uh, I'm going to, I will remember it later and I'll add it somewhere in the notes for everybody. But um, oh, yeah. they on uh, Christmas, or, or click frenzy one of the big days one autumn in uh, in australian e-commerce their site went down because it was so busy and it took them until february to get it back oh, up no. again <laughs> february wow. um anyway enough of that that's like curveball mm -hmm. in the world of affiliates there. <laughs> um 
All right, we've got we've got enough time. Probably about uh, one more question, so I'm going to squeeze in two because that's what I do. Uh, the first question is one of mine, which is something which has come up a lot when we've been talking about um, Black Friday planning in the world of Facebook ads, which we've covered quite a lot on the podcast. And one of the key strategies, which all the experts seem to come up with, was um, do it early. Get get customers to buy from you for the first time in August and September and October. So is there already a customer by the time it comes to Black Friday because ads are cheaper and everything's cheaper in August, September and October. Therefore, and you're more likely to convert them if they're already customers. So you get them early, you run the big campaigns, you put your ad spend out then. Is that something that's moving into the affiliate world? Are people going for the let's really incentivize a sale in August, September, October. So as then we've got people on our customer list for the big Black Friday event. Quick, quick answers. Yes. Fair Anyone enough. doing this yet in affiliates? That's a little unique. Um, I mean, the only thing I would say to that is, I mean, one thing you can do with doing that early is just um, when you're getting people that are responsive to your ads early months out and you can use that data to create, you know, a lookalike audience. And so mm. you can create a lookalike audience within um, your Facebook ads. And then during the holiday period, what you could do is, you know, use that audience to use that lookalike audience to target people, but then just double down on your ad spend and just kind of see where it goes. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, yeah, that you can do, the advantage to doing that early. It's more a strategy mm. to avoid the noise on Facebook that is. Yeah. Black Friday, so you get them yeah. otherwise, but yeah. clearly not yet coming in affiliates. So you can all have that mm -hmm. idea for free. Um, I didn't come up with it. I'm just <laughs> passing it on. So we're going to go to our, our final question, which is a techie question. So um, Reza, one of our lovely audience has asked, um, what are the key criteria of picking the right affiliate software? So which software wow. to be using, be it your own software or be it a network? And Rick, I'm going to come to you first because I'm guessing you help a lot of people through this, this decision making process. So, and bullet point answers would be good. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Yeah. So real, real quick, the, the way I do this for clients is we do the competitive analysis, find out where their competitors are, what network or platform they're on, because that usually tells us that there are affiliates there that can help drive revenue to the program. So um, and a lot of it comes down to, to that, but cost, um, affiliate networks range in costs from a setup cost of a few thousand dollars to to $500. And then there's, then there's like Arlen's who you, you got, you like, um, I believe it's a monthly, monthly charge, mm -hmm. but, but a lot of these networks uh, take the override. They, they charge you per, um, per transaction too. So there, there's a lot of things to consider, but I, I, if I have more time, we can probably do a whole podcast on this too. Mm -hmm. And actually mm -hmm. I, I might, I might take that and do it my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that is definitely a, a great topic, uh, Chloe and Rick, great, great response. But yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. And, and we do educate on our end people that ask us that as well, because people that come and approach us are familiar with our solution. They're familiar with other solutions and the, uh, affiliate networks. And so, I mean, a, a real quick kind of bullet points would be, of course, number one, yeah, going our route, going with the affiliate software route in-house, there's definitely a, a, a huge cost saving. As Rick mentioned, most of those larger affiliate networks, you know, they're going to charge you a few thousand just to get into it. And that is just to get into it. Outside of that, they charge fees on top of the commissions that you got to pay out. Yeah. So the, the cost factor is definitely considerably uh, less to, to do it on in-house and manage it yourself. Um, you know, the, the other piece is, of course, if you do go the route and you pay the extra money and you go with the affiliate networks, yeah, of course, you're, you're going to get a, a quicker exposure. To, I mean, depending on what you do in-house, the, you know, these affiliate networks have their own built-in networks of affiliates that you'd be able to really kind of be able to tap into instantly. So you do have access to that. But, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. As Rick mentioned, you really got to do a uh, kind of a comparison and a cost analysis and look at what your competitors are doing. You got to try to estimate, all right, if I do spend this amount of money up front, is it going to be worthwhile? Am I going to get a return? So, you know, you, you do have to think about it, but those are some quick things offhand is, is just is a cost is the number, number one thing um, up front that I see is a, is definitely a savings. If you're looking to just try it out, 
and you're not really sure about it, your startup, I, I would say, you know, you may want to go with the in-house method, you know, mm. do your own outreach to your own affiliates and influencers and try to figure it out. Cool. Yeah. Excellent answer. Um, we are very nearly out of time. So, Chris, I'm afraid you may be glad I'm not going to ask you that question, but cool. I'm not going to no, have time to ask you um, that question. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two little stats which are quite useful. That, OK, uh, well, well uh, I've got time for report. I've got time for two quick stats. So go with the two quick okay. stats. From a Forrester report, it's worth saying that 20% of all US publishers work with five or more networks. Some of them we see work with tens or even hundreds. 96% of publishers work with a single network. So networks that tell you that they got exclusive stuff. Um, yeah, big deal. Um, <laughs> it's probably not true, but it's worthwhile making sure that you're checking out kind of where an affiliate is. Um, I would say with our software, we can find it. You can see exactly what networks they're linking to. But there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Thank, thank you, Chris. Loving, like those stats as well. Uh, they certainly add to it. Right, uh, everybody. Thank you, um, those of you who tuned in live for asking so many questions. Um, loving it. So there's huge interaction from the audience today. So much appreciating that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you hugely to our three panelists, to Rick McGinnis from Bearcat Media, to Arlen Robinson from OSI Affiliate Software, to Chris Tragic from Publisher Discovery. On the screen right now, you can see the offers they've got available for you you guys and those will be linked to somewhere near where you're watching this video if you're not here with us live and uh, both Rick and Arlen have podcasts about the topic of affiliates and other e-commerce things so do go and check those out as well and we'll add links to those too as for me I'm the host of the keep optimizing podcast which is what's bringing you this today and next month in fact today we have started our month on google ads which is a new topic uh today we had uh, my my interview with mike rhodes go live who's author of the number one google ads book which is pretty cool um and we're talking about how to get started with google ads next week we've got why you should try display ads and how to make it work with the marvelous becky hopkin from digital gearbox which i learned a lot in that one and i'm a google ads geek so um you're gonna love that episode then, of course, we have to do shopping campaigns. So I've got the brilliant Richard Hill joining us to go through shopping campaigns. And we couldn't do it without doing a whole episode on keyword ads either. So we're doing that with the brilliant uh, Justin Seibert. So lots of very cool stuff coming up for you in Google Ads. And we agreed this morning that that webinar is happening on the 1st of June. And you'll be able to sign up for that from tomorrow. <sighs> And the Keep Optimizing podcast, of course, is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I always forget to say that at the end of this. Well, look, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. My clock says it's bang on the o'clock. So we're going to say goodbye now. So bye from me and bye from all the panelists, too. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.